This is the first question. Very short questions. A very, he has a lot of content that you have to know. Which of the following prescription the nurse should anticipate? The nurse provide care for a client with what? Acute bronchitis. What kind of prescription do you think you need to know? That you need to give it to the patient. It's the sticking strategy. The key word is bronchitis. And which one do you anticipate? Think about it. You just have to come up with the plan and say, hey, how am I going to tackle this patient? Key word is bronchitis. And what prescription would I want to take? Even if you don't know the prescriptions, you don't know what to do, look at the prescriptions and see if they matches. Why would you give more train to somebody who has bronchitis? I mean, do they have a fever? I never told you they have fever. Well, then, oh, any pain anyway, that's not a problem. Now about the three answers, do you, can you recognize what they are used for, what they look for? What do you think? Then you go back. What is the treatment for like, bronchitis? It's a COPD. That's so. COPD, what do you need to do? Open the airway, right? Bronchodilator is a key. And then bronchitis, mostly secretion. And therefore, take care of the secretion. Does anything open the airway? Does anything help with the secretion? If you don't know, then that's the problem because then you can pick it up. But you can figure it out, right? Whenever you see C-H-O-L, this is cholinergic. You don't use cholinergic for COPD. You need a bronchodilator. Most bronchodilators are anti-cholinergic. Therefore, you can take this out. This is also cholinergic, so you can eliminate it. What you left with is this. This is a bronchodilator. You also help with um, decreased secretion. It has anticholinergic effect. Ipratropine, that's what we know about. But there's other bronchodilators. This is also is FDA approved medication. So you have to know it's a very common medication. We use it in asthma patients and bronchitis. In asthma patients, it's a long-term use. You can use it in long-term, but it's a bronchodilator, right? And it's also helped with secretion. So it's very common in COPD patients have it. So that's the one. If you don't even know the sticking strategy, that's the design of the question, to be able to eliminate the answers and don't even know. So you answer questions, you have no idea. That's the, the purpose of this question. Same thing, right? What is the next priority action? The next provide care for a client in the post anesthesia care unit, password, back you, who is requesting pain medication post exploratory laparotomy. Okay, after surgery, irrelevant. A patient is sleepy, drowsy, but easily arousable. This is key. Is sleepy, is drowsy, and easily arousable. What is the next priority action? You assess their respiratory status. Do you give them nalazin? Do you give them the medication they are asking? Or you assess their vitals? Test taking strategy and knowing your prioritization. You have to be sharp, but you need your content to be able to do that. Sleepy, drowsy, easily arousable. What is the content here? Have you heard anything about sedation skill? You have to know for your board. It's a common respiratory problem. Sedation skill. What do you do? Somebody who is sleepy, is arousable, is drowsy, and easily arousable. What do you think you do? Assess their respiratory status? Give them naloxone or give them pain medication or assess them. You don't need to assess their respiratory status. It's sleepy, drowsy, but easily arousable. This is stage one of the sedation skill. You don't need to give them naloxone. These are used for patient who is somnolent. It can't do anything. That is stage three. Respiratory status usually like stage two, stage three. And vitals is not going to help you. 
It's the same thing. This is usually for stage two, stage three. This guy, we just need to give them the medication. Because even though he's sleepy, he's drowsable, you can wake him up. He's asking for me. Give it to me. But if he fall asleep when he's talking, yeah, it's stage two. That one, you can give them naloxone. That is the content to answer this question. And then receive phone call from the parent of a school age child 10 days after tonsillectomy. Which statement is concerning? Once again, buzzword, tonsillectomy, 10 days. After 10 days of tonsillectomy, this is what they tell you. What should you worry about? Test taking strategy. When I'm taking these tests, I had tonsillectomy. I know bleeding is number one. And the bleeding is what? Clearing your throat, right? Swallowing problem, swallowing too much. And one of this, he said he's drinking a lot of water. His temperature is 101. He's going for a football game. And pain when he chew. Which one is concerning? Think about it. Tell me which one you think is very concerning among this, if you know it, which one do you think is dangerous? What do you think? A lot of water. I have one on one temperature. I went to a football game and then and then what? I'm reporting pain when I'm chewing. What do you think is the bad? I mean, if you know it's bad, then you have to be sharp. And how do you know you have to be sharp? This tonsillectomy. And what is the content? What is the priority teaching you tell the parent? Well, drinking a lot of water is good. Having this is fine. It's not bad. Playing with chewing is not good. Football game, you can play for 14 days. Otherwise, you're bleeding. So... You should not be playing football 14 days. You'll be bleeding. Tell them not to go and play football. And this provide care for a client with left chest tube. Assessment reveal no tightening in the chest tube. What is the next priority action? You see what I'm doing? I'm just trying to use the content to create a question. And I want you to think about it. You have the chest tube connected to the patient. And there's no tightening up and down. What do you want to do? Lower the provac down, increase the suction so that more suction coming, assess the long sounds, and replace the provac. Probably is broken. What do you think is your priority function? Do you know what the function of chest tube and then what each component means? And what you should do based on observation. I have a video on YouTube. You know about chest tube, it's free of charge. Chest tube, what happened and each condition. Tidling is an indication of a good lung function. Okay, that means you take a breath. That's the definition. You breathe in, the tube move up. You breathe up, you move up and down. The water move in and out, in and out. Every time you take a breath and you blow out, you move. That's what we call tightening. Therefore, if you know you, that you're taking a breath and I don't see evidence of that, I need to assess your lung. The rest is not answering the definition of tightening. When I say this kind of question, I come on to show you test taking strategies. I'm trying to help somebody. To tell you how to answer question. The word is tightly. You don't focus about anything. Ask yourself, what does that mean? It means in and out, expiratory, inspiratory indication in the movement. Therefore, if I don't see the movement, I don't think you're breathing. I need to listen to your lungs. And the last question, prioritization as usual. You can't go without, without it. Which client the nurse should see first? Four clients. Change of shift. This is what you have. Who do you want to see? Tell me who you think is dangerous. Somebody is receiving for finishing with darting tongue. Depression and refusing group therapy. Bipolar, standing while eating burritos. 
with suicide ideation being watched by another star. Test taking strategy, thinking. Don't let the things disturb you. Look at it, what is happening. Don't bring anything unnecessary. Use what I've given you. So what do you think? What do you think? You're finishing and you have that in tongue. Depression, refusing group therapy. Bipolar, is tiny while eating burrito. In your seaside, it's being watched by another star. Are you surprised? Anything surprises you. If you have seaside, somebody is watching you continuously. Well, there's nothing for me to do. Somebody is watching you. We're seeing you 24 hours. You're bipolar. You're not going to sit down and eat. And you're getting more calorie. I'm good with that. You have depression. You're fusing group therapy. Good luck with that. Finizine is the first generation antipsychotic, ducting tongue. This is what we call tardive dyskinesia. And you got to see them. Adapt and close. Take care of yourself.